Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another fanfiction. In Revenge of the Sith, Anakin was put before the Council on behalf of Palpatine, to be his personal representative on the Council. Upon hearing this, Master Windu denied Anakin the rank of Master, something the poster boy for the Clone Wars had wanted and expected for a long time. He had an apprentice of his own, Ahsoka, who referred to him as Master, and so did others below him in rank. Not to mention, the rank of Master would grant Anakin access that he needed to the restricted section of the Jedi Archives. Full with Jedi and Sith knowledge that might lead him to his path of saving Padme from death. Enraged, but knowing his place, Anakin took a seat, eventually after voicing his anger. At least in the movie. In today's fanfiction, let's look at what would have happened had Anakin not taken a seat. In the novel Revenge of the Sith by Matthew Stover, Anakin actually was taunting Mace Windu in his mind. He said this, and I quote, Anakin matched his stare. Perhaps I'll take yours. His own voice inside his head had a hot black fire that smoked from the depths of his furnace heart. You think you can stop me from saving my love? You think you can make me watch her die? Go ahead and vipod this, you. So, in the official novel signed off by George Lucas, written by Matthew Stover, and if you haven't watched my interview with Matthew Stover himself, then make sure you check that out on my channel. It's called Rule of Two, Matthew Stover. It's a really great interview. I hope you guys enjoy it. Anyways, Anakin was already in the mindset to fight Mace Windu after being denied the rank of Master. So, what if he actually went through with it? What if that furnace of a heart burned with rage a little bit longer, and he didn't need Obi-Wan's call to bring him to his senses? Anakin grabs his lightsaber from his belt and walks towards Mace Windu as he ignites it and says, I'll take yours instead. Master Yoda immediately stops Anakin with the Force, which proves to be very difficult for him as Anakin starts to break through it by the second, his powers and anger rising. He was the chosen one after all. As the rest of the Jedi Masters get up from their seats to intervene, especially Obi-Wan Kenobi, they all stand waiting for Yoda to make the next move. Mace Windu, however, is the only one still sitting. Everyone, take your seats. Master, release Skywalker. Should the boy have something to say, I'm right here. Anakin was released. Only some of the masters sat back down, while Kenobi and a few others like Plo and Kit Fisto stood motionless at this outrage. Anakin stood there, lightsaber ignited, eyes beaming with an ice blue colder than space itself. Skywalker, for years I've doubted you. I never trusted you. And now, you just proved it to everyone else. Your emotions are too rampant. Yes, you're gifted. But so am I. Yet I control my emotions, which let me tell you, boy, run hotter than yours. But I will not be a spectacle of them. I will not bend to them. I will master them, such as now. And you are lucky that I have. Anakin sheathed his weapon. He came to his senses. If rage were visible, Anakin would be unseen to the eye, covered in it like a thick smoke. Who patronized me since I came here? You've held back every decision I ever wanted to make. My mother died because of this council's ridiculous rules, and now she... Anakin stopped himself. He almost gave up the biggest secret of his life, that he was married to Padme and she was pregnant with their child. Yoda's ears perked up. They sensed it. It was too late. Skywalker had motive. He was not psychotic without cause. He was desperate. Skywalker, troubled you have become. Hmm. I sense fear in you. Speak before us. Explain yourself. I... 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 Speak, or exiled you will be a Jedi no more. Anakin's eyes fell to the floor. He was trapped. Fight Windu or explain everything. He would be expelled either way, he thought. Padme would have all the wrong attention on her, pregnant with the child of a Jedi Knight. She would be furious. This could cost her her career, and maybe even their relationship. And then... Anakin looked beyond the masters outside the window at the horizon, the clouds beautifully cascading upon the sky as the sun broke through. But what if they could help her? He never fully opened up, and perhaps now that everything was left on the table, he really had no other choice. Master Yoda, I recently came to you with concerns. Hmm, remember I do. I, I have someone important to me, an attachment, if you will. I fear my strong premonitions of her dying will come true. 
The entire council gasped. <sighs> Kenobi stood once again, only to be seated as Yoda motioned softly with an outstretched green hand, meaning for him to take a seat again. This looked just as bad on Kenobi as it did on Anakin, for Anakin was his Padawan. The master always takes the failure or triumph of his student. Suspect this, I did. What the rank of master has to do with this? Hmm? Respect? Hmm. I doubt this. Speak the truth, you will. Anakin's lips trembled. What he was about to say was something that he knew would change everything. <gasps> Have you ever heard of the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Anakin felt like Palpatine at this moment. The entire council went quiet. If anyone would know about this, maybe the Jedi would. He was already going to be expelled. It was too late to turn back now. Might as well dig for some answers. There was nothing left to lose. Every Jedi Master looked as outraged as they were confused. Masters, I require the rank of Master to access the restricted section. There, I hope to find the secrets to save my friend from death. Mace Windu leans back in his seat as he looks at the ceiling of the large Jedi Council chambers. Realizing why Skywalker acted the way he did, Yoda broke the silence. Of this Darth, where did you hear? I speak, Skywalker. Anakin looked up from the ground, directly into Mace's eyes. Chancellor Palpatine. Anakin looked around at the Jedi Masters as they all gasped again and started to speak out of turn, enraged. We must stop him. Our suspicions were right. Master Yoda, let's end this now. Silence, said Master Yoda. Troubling, this is. Mm. First appoints you, he does, on this council. But... A Sith legend he speaks of. Mm. The dark side, I sense. Question him. We must. No, I... He's a politician. He's very educated. I'm sure he learned it from one of his clients somewhere in passing, perhaps. Sure you are? Bet everything on it? No, said Mace. We must all request an emergency meeting at the Chancellor's office. Immediately. Skywalker, you're coming with us said Mace. As all the Jedi Masters rose, they walked out of the hall and into several LAAT gunships manned by clone troopers, heading towards Palpatine's office. Entering the Chancellor's office, they saw Palpatine at his desk. Well, Jedi Masters, Anakin, welcome. What do I owe this surprise visit? Mace Windu broke the silence immediately. Chancellor, we've been told by Skywalker here that you know of a Darth Plagueis. Palpatine's smirk immediately faded. We would like to know if this is true, and if so, where did you learn of such information? Palpatine looked at each Jedi Master, as if eyeing them up, calculating, not saying anything. Then a big smirk lifted his face as he looked to one of his vases. Standing up, he said, Well, as a politician, it is in the Republic's best interest to have highly attuned ears to all those speaking around me. I so happened to hear of two people speaking of it in a lounge on the outskirts of Nar Shaddaa. As the Jedi Master spread out around the room, Mace Windu continued to speak. So, Skywalker came to you with questions of immortality, let's say, and you just so happened to know the story of this Darth Plagueis. Would you care to enlighten us about it? Even the Jedi don't know about such a being. How could you? Palpatine got very stern very quickly. Do not question my knowledge or how I came to learn it. I was studying ancient texts when you were still a child with a braid. What is the meaning of this intrusion? Unannounced. To the temple, you will come, Chancellor. Questions we have for you. Documented, they must be. Anakin, please make them come to their senses. Masters, the Chancellor knows many things of this universe. We can't question everything. No, we cannot. But when it so conveniently fits your concerns of immortality and is linked to a Sith Lord, which the Jedi do not even possess knowledge of, something in the Force feels very wrong. Obi-Wan stepped to Anakin. He's right, Anakin. Trust your feelings. This all feels, well, strange. What's strange here is you all disrupting the Chancellor's private time in his office. Mace looked disgusted at Anakin's words the betrayal as he watched Skywalker move next to and stand with the Chancellor. Chosen your side you have, said Yoda. Palpatine's look of frustration immediately turned into joy. 
Mace and the Jedi moved to take the Chancellor with them, when Palpatine extended one arm to the vase and summoned from it a blaring red lightsaber. As he pulled a second one from his sleeve, twirling like a cyclone of red death and screaming a forced scream that the Jedi had not heard in thousands of years, he moved in speeds that Anakin had never witnessed before, striking down several of the Jedi Masters as they all fumbled to get their weapons out in time, which of course they did not. Sidious was far too fast. He knew that he didn't have much time. He had to take out the weaker beings first if he were to survive. Plo Koon, Kid Fisto, Ki Adi Mundi, and all the others all died via impalement or electrocution at the hands of the most powerful Sith Lord that they had ever seen. As Mace Windu, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Yoda advanced very quickly on Palpatine, he sent a force wave of lightning towards them, along with a massive force push. Throwing them all back to the corner of the office, Palpatine got out his comm link and whispered in it, Execute. Order 66. Palpatine knew that he needed more reinforcements than just him and Anakin, and at this point, Anakin hadn't even gotten his lightsaber out. He was probably extremely shocked that Palpatine was indeed a Sith Lord, and at this moment, Sidious didn't know what Anakin's reaction would be in this time. As clones began to barge in, firing upon the Jedi, they all deflected the blasts, and Anakin looked to Palpatine then to the clones, and then to Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Mace Windu, his hand hovering over his lightsaber. As Mace moved with Kenobi to attack Palpatine, Yoda quickly turned to push the clones so hard into the wall behind them that they broke through the wall itself. He used the force to break the door to Palpatine's office so no more clones could enter. Sidious sends a massive bolt of lightning at Yoda, who is shot backwards into the wall. As Mace and Obi-Wan advance on him, Anakin watched them all fight in a colorful blur of their sabers, almost like a dancing flower as its luminous petals swayed with the wind. He had never seen anyone move as fast as Palpatine. He felt he should join in with his fellow masters, but the conflict within him was strong. Palpatine was the only one who could show him the way to save Padme, and if he died, Padme died too. Mace Windu was pushed back with the force as Palpatine twirled steadfast onto Obi-Wan. It was all happening in the blink of an eye, as Anakin watched from the corner of Palpatine's desk. Kenobi looked shaky. He had never seen his master like this. Even against Dooku all those years ago in Genosis, he had looked more confident even then. His master wouldn't survive. And what was worse, his instincts thought, his wife dying, or his best friend in front of him. Which would he choose? Sidious used the force to choke Kenobi, raising him into the air. Windu and Yoda slowly rolled around as they tried to get to their feet, failing, smoke smoldering and emanating from their robes. Anakin could feel the beads of sweat dripping down his brow, some falling into the crevice of his scar like a tiny creek, the same scar that Asajj Ventress dealt him years prior during the start of the Clone Wars. He watched the life leaving Kenobi, his best friend, his mentor, the closest thing he had to a father, the man who raised him when Qui-Gon died willing to leave the Jedi just to fulfill his promise. He knew the story. Kenobi's saber fell from his hands as Palpatine writhed with power, one hand up in the air and the other clenching his weapon. Where Kenobi's feet were kicking the air as hard as he could, now reduced to just feeble punts as he immediately dropped to the ground. Sidious flew headfirst into the wall. Skywalker looked over to Kenobi as he lay unconscious on the ground. Please don't be dead, he thought. His lightsaber ignited as he stared at Palpatine, who got up and saw that it was Anakin who did that. Like a bantha in headlights, Palpatine was shocked Skywalker would do such a thing. You were behind this war, playing both sides. You were behind the assassinations on Padme's life. You controlled Dooku, I, I trusted you. Palpatine didn't know what to say. For the first time, he merely just looked at Anakin, then to the boy's blue lightsaber. Are you going to kill me? Skywalker, stand down, you are too conflicted said Mace from behind as he got up, when he was immediately shot back into Palpatine's desk as it crumbled into pieces. Anakin didn't even take his gaze off of Palpatine, he just struck a Jedi Master. Hopefully for his sake, Mace was still alive. Anakin walked towards Palpatine as the Senate summoned his saber from the floor. Standing in the same spot, he ignited it like he had done moments before with the other Jedi when they were alive, which now they laid scattered across the floor, lifeless in pieces. The future master and apprentice locked sabers as Palpatine taunted the boy. You are angry, Anakin. 
I can feel it. Use your emotions. Forget what the Jedi taught you. They were holding you back. They lied to you. As did you, callously said Anakin. They fought in a blaze of red and blue. Anakin was standing his ground, but he knew Palpatine wasn't unleashing his full powers. Not yet. Skywalker turned and twirled the saber behind his back when he suddenly realized Palpatine had vanished and appeared behind him as he looked down to see a red blade of fire locked on top of a green one. As Master Yoda had arrived and saved Anakin from losing yet another limb. Check on Kenobi, you must. Handle Sidious, I will. But Master, Yoda pushed the force out in both directions as Palpatine was sent back a few steps and Anakin was moved several meters. Rushing over to Kenobi, he says, Master, Master, are you all right? Obi-Wan lay in Anakin's arms as Skywalker placed his fingers around Kenobi's forehead, sending energy and checking his vitals at the same time, jolting his brain to wake up. As he looked at his master's familiar blue eyes slowly open, Skywalker began to smile. Kenobi looked at his Padawan and softly said, Wh what are you smiling at? Did you lose your weapon again? Anakin helped Obi-Wan to his feet as he grabbed his saber and collected himself. I thought I lost you, master. Not yet. I hate to say I told you so, but do you have doubts now why the Council wanted you to spy on him? Anakin gave his master a look. The two ignited their sabers and joined the battle. Sidious was cornered. Yoda, Anakin, and Obi-Wan all held their sabers up to him as he stood there with no way out. He was overpowered. This was the end. You're outnumbered, Chancellor. You must stand trial. Palpatine growled at Skywalker. She, she won't survive without my help. We can defeat them, Anakin. Listen to me, please. Would you save your friends over your own wife? I thought you loved her. Yoda and Obi-Wan didn't need to take their eyes off Palpatine in order to see the doubt in Anakin's mind. Anything he needs, the Jedi can deliver. Skywalker, listen not. The dark side, a trick it all is. Use you, he will. Your future, discuss later, we will. As Anakin thought, he knew that Palpatine was behind it all, and he had to be taken into custody. Maybe then he could learn the ways of saving Padme as a means of bartering with him. In jail, perhaps. Let's take him in, Anakin said. Palpatine looked at Anakin. So be it. As he threw one lightsaber into Kenobi's chest and the other at Yoda's, who deflected it and struck Palpatine down immediately. No! yelled Anakin, as he went to grab his master who fell in his arms and uttered his last breath, much like Qui-Gon was lifted in Obi-Wan's arms years before, perhaps in another life. It's, it's not your fault, Anakin. And so, with that, the Force answered back. In what would have been the loss of Padme, now saved due to Anakin's remainder in the light side of the Force, the Force itself had to take the other closest person to Skywalker. A soul for a soul. Obi-Wan for Padme. Both his master and Palpatine, his potential master, died that day. As Anakin lay in tears and Mace Windu walked over to see what had happened, now wasn't the time to deal with Skywalker. The three of them looked at Obi-Wan, lifeless in silence. <clears throat> As Yoda walked over to Kenobi, Anakin didn't know what the Jedi Grandmaster was doing. Placing a hand on Anakin's shoulder, he motioned for Anakin to step away and lower his master to the ground. He closed his eyes as the tips of his ears moved, like they were feeling the air. Yoda hovered his hands over Obi-Wan's chest where the lightsaber had gone through, as if time were being reversed. It completely fixed and cauterized the wound, which was now no more, just healthy flesh. But Kenobi was still dead. No breath or pulse could be felt. With a touch of his finger over Kenobi's heart, a jolt began his heart once more, and the Jedi Master opened his eyes quickly, gasping for air. <gasps> As Obi-Wan looked around, he saw his three friends looking down upon him. What happened? Master, did, did, you, did you bring me back? Yoda opened his eyes and smiled with his little thin lips. Hmm, did you? I will. And so in the end, it was the Jedi who could achieve immortality, or at least bring back those from the dead. Kamino was investigated, and the clones all had their chips deactivated after the Republic found out the hidden plans of Order 66 all along under Palpatine's design. Anakin would be let go from the Jedi Temple for his acts of outrage towards Mace Windu in both events, 
and his marriage of Padme Amidala and the creation of their two children. The council would not have this type of attachment where Anakin and his children would be trained in the temple or so he wished. This would break the rules of the Jedi and bring a danger to all involved. And not to mention, if no one could have attachments, why was Skywalker and his children allowed? Anakin and Padme would move to Naboo. He would train his children in the ways of the Force from birth, upholding the values of the Jedi with the ways of Qui-Gon Jinn, trusting the will of the Force and not bending it for political gain, but of course giving them the option to pursue any career that they wanted in the future. However, they wanted to be just like their father. Obi-Wan would frequently visit his best friend and the Skywalker children who saw him as an uncle. He would watch Anakin train them from time to time and gave pointers when he could, but of course, ill-advised from the council and in secret. You could say Obi-Wan was becoming more like his former master, Qui-Gon Jinn, after all. When the next big threat hit the galaxy, there would be two new force users more powerful than any, ready to help fight for peace. Anakin, Padme, Luke and Leia lived happily ever after. <laughs>